I was greeted this morning by the ranch's only nail guy, so who could be mad about that? It seemed like it was going to be a great day until I got into the truck, and it wouldn't start. What a way to start the day. How's it going, y'all? I'm Katie, and this is my wife, Darian, and together we make the team at Right Toy Shearing. We shear llamas, alpacas, and sheep, but our real passion is spreading knowledge about our industry. You never know what we'll see at the next job, but it's sure to be satisfying and absolutely adorable. So join us as we travel nine states and service thousands of animals. Welcome to the party. We hope you stick around. Thankfully, we were able to jump the truck and it started and ran just fine. Later, I would find out that the starter was going bad and end up having to replace that myself. I was super grateful that Darian chose to drive this morning so that I could catch a quick nap on the way to our first stop of the day. This place only has four alpacas and one dog that is extremely excited to see us. Even with this small interference, it takes us no time to get ready. We first slip on our knee pads so that our knees don't hurt against the concrete, and then we go and set up our workspace, again with a little help from our friend. Before we get started, we go and check out our crew, although one person is missing. He's already tied up and waiting for us. As per usual, we go ahead and lay him down and restrain him gently before we remove his blanket. Now, all of that light brown stuff that you see there is dirt and sand that has been trapped under the fiber. It doesn't reduce the quality of the fiber because it'll wash out, but it is a little hard on my shears as compared to a clean one. And as you watch here, he gives me a little bit of wiggle as he adjusts for some comfort before he allows me to go ahead and finish removing that blanket off of him. And man, is it pretty. This dude's name is Daryl, and we did give him a mullet, so if you'd like to see that, go ahead and click on that card up there. If not, we're going to go ahead and continue through the rest of this herd. And I'll add Daryl's video at the end as a suggested video. On the last girl here, I really want to take the time to admire the coloration in her. It is not very often that I get to see a paint in an alpaca. They are more common in, in llamas, but this is truly beautiful. This owner keeps the fiber to have it made into things, and I'm not sure what his plan is, but some people will process the white and the brown separately and make two different colored yarns, which is super cool. Now we're finished at our first stop, but everybody seems pretty happy about it. So it's time for us to get back to the truck and start packing up. Creating that epic TikTok video ate up a little bit of our time, so we were there for an hour and 15 where we should have only been an hour. Now we're running a bit late to our next place, but if we work efficiently, we should catch up. We arrive at the second place of the day at 10.55. At the small Airbnb, we meet two brother alpacas for the first time. And honestly, they don't seem very impressed. In desperate need of making up some time, we get right after it. Both these boys are actually Surrey alpacas, there are two different fiber types for alpacas, Surrey and Wakaya. The Surreys are the longer, straight-haired ones, while the Wakaya are the fluffier guys. I believe that the fact that there are two different fiber types tends to create a lot of confusion in the industry. Some believe Surreys do not have to be shorn as often as Wakaya's, but that is incorrect. It should be a yearly schedule for both. Both these guys also got a little TLC on their toenails. Unlike other farm animals, alpacas and llamas have soft pads on the bottom of their feet that are split into two toes and have toenails on them. The goal here is to trim those toenails back even with the pad. There's a little bit of an interesting find here as we go to the black one's mouth. He has grown his second set of teeth, but he has not lost his first set yet. It's not currently giving him any problems, but if it doesn't fall out, it probably will need to be pulled. After we already clean up the blanket, we roll the seconds and the thirds into one big pile and put them into their own bag to be used for lesser quality yarn. As we start to pack up, the guys head to the farthest end of the pasture to make sure we can't shear them again. We finish up in about 45 minutes and have made up no time, still running late. While Darian worked diligently on entering information, I was busy turning around because I missed several turns. It was then that I realized that that banana had burned off from breakfast and I needed to refuel. With a little bit of grease in me, I was better able to enjoy the beautiful views on the rest of our drive. I even noticed that we passed a sign for the fourth place that we'll be going later today. We pull onto their private road running an hour behind and it takes us three minutes to get from one end of the road all the way down to their house. Here we only have one alpaca. His name is Rue, and I've been shearing him for at least eight years now. We've also been doing it in pretty much the same spot, so it takes us no time to set up. Rue is an old pro, so let's take a look at how he handles his top knot being short. Shaping the top knot is owner preference, but typically a round top knot is industry standard. 
Honestly, this is purely an aesthetic preference. Some believe that it could help block the sun from their eyes, but I do not find that to be true because I'm obviously removing that fiber so that they can see better. Even though Rue now has 20-20 vision, he does not want to look at me. I know he feels a lot better, though. We're headed back down that gravel road just 25 minutes after we had arrived, and then it's through a couple more back roads and across a river before we arrive at our fourth place of the day, a gorgeous wedding venue. This little slice of hill country heaven is home to seven alpacas that we've been sharing for the past four years. These cuties' main gig is just to look cute for the wedding venue. Their fiber will not be utilized to make yarn, so that means we do not have to worry about contaminating it with dirt or other vegetable matter and can shear them directly on the floor. Let's take a quick peek at how we restrain the alpacas. I begin by clearing off the hawks and then loop my rope around them and pull them snugly to a post. Meanwhile, Darian is clearing out the front legs and all the hard to reach places so we don't have to worry about them later. These places tend to be easy to nick and so we want to avoid that by getting it done now. Then she wraps her rope around the front legs. The first loop is a very easy slip knot. The next loop is a half hitch around the other leg and then another half hitch around both legs. This creates a gentle restraint that is easy to remove and secure. Last thing to do is to gently pull them tight and tie off that other rope. Our method may look a little different than the crews that you see that use ropes and pulleys, but I am self-taught and this works really well for us without slowing us down. After their haircut, these guys waste no time finding a water trough to cool off, and it seems that that's their favorite activity. The hair on this guy's legs has rotted off because of how much time he spends submerged in the water trough. The shortened hair isn't causing him any negative effects, but it does reduce the quality of the fiber. If you were going to use this fiber to make yarn, all those little bitty pieces would be equivalent to second cuts. It would create little balls that would get in the way when you tried to spin it into yarn. But thankfully, that's not a problem today because remember, these guys are just for looks. All we care about is keeping them cool and comfortable. And maybe a little bit about looking cute for the pictures. Speaking of cute, check out the hot mess that's happening out in the pasture. I guess those itches were just so good after a haircut that they couldn't resist a little scratching. But their last alpaca buddy is scratching for a totally different reason. I remove his beautiful gray coat to reveal that he has a skin condition, and to me, it looks like mites. Whatever it is, it has given the skin a very dry, scaly appearance, and the same thing on his neck. But don't worry, before you write a bad comment, they are working with veterinarians and he is getting better. Now that we're finished with him, we remove those blades and sanitize our equipment so that we do not contaminate any future farms. After an hour and 40 minutes, we head out again. That's 20 minutes less than we had allotted, so we're starting to catch up time. I chug down a coconut water to help me rehydrate, and then we're basically at the next place already. It was a quick drive to these five llamas that I will be sharing for the third year in a row. This fleece came off so beautifully that I'm going to just let you guys sit here and vibe with it. Feel free to sit and watch in silence, or you could join me at the end to see what new curveballs this herd throws. Wow, that was incredibly satisfying, but I know you noticed all of that dirt in there. And yes, it is terrible on my blades. But if a little bit of dirt is all I have to complain about in this herd, I'll take it. These guys are taking hoof trimming like champs, they're being easy to halter, and they're standing pretty much perfect for shearing. I honestly couldn't ask for more at this point. But while trimming up the last girl's tail, I noticed something different. The two pieces of her vulva are fused together, and the opening to her vagina goes up to her anus. This is a normal vulva for comparison. It all looks healthy enough and doesn't seem to be giving her any problems, so there's nothing much you can do about it. But now it's our time to face the biggest challenge of the herd, the stud. I do find that most males are more dramatic about shearing than the females, but that is not true for all of them. Some of the best behaved llamas that I shear are intact males, but that's not him. 
Honestly, he's not a bad boy to handle. He's just a little nervous when it comes to his front legs, and we know that. So, going into this, we're very aware that he is going to be a little flighty once we get to that point of the shearing process, and we know to be prepared to take a little extra care, and also to provide a spit cam. I'm often asked why we tie their faces so tight to the post, and it's a really simple answer. Their long necks provide a lot of room for movement. If they can sling their head, it gets them very worked up and increases the chance of them or us getting hurt. So in terms of safety, the tighter the better. And good thing we have it tight, because just like I thought, he is not liking his legs being touched. Llamas are incredibly intelligent, and he's doing much better than his previous years. But I know that I can't stop just because he's pulling away from me. If I do, then he'll learn that that was the trick to get me to stop, and in the future he will continue to behave this way. So I continue to be persistent, holding his leg and letting him know that I'm not harming him in any way, until he finally realizes that he can stand up and release his weight from me. Then I let go. Now we continue forward with some hoof trimming. He absolutely does not like his front two hooves, but he seems to handle the back two just fine. Or at least until you look at the spit cam. Uh, you tell him, buddy. Overall, this guy has made a 100% change. The first year, he threw a complete fit about every part of his body, and now all we have left are his little legs. He is very excited to get away from us and back to showing off for the ladies. We wrapped up after about an hour and 10 minutes worth of work. It finally seemed like we were catching up. So it was about time to dip into the Dr. Pepper stash and maybe eat an ice cream sandwich. We're still running about 50 minutes late at this point when we arrive at our sixth job of the day. Thankfully, all of my clients have been very kind and flexible with their schedule and we're excited to see AJ and Charlie, two male llamas that live here together. There's no electricity down at this pen, but thankfully I bring my generator and it fires right up. AJ is new here, but Charlie has always been a fan of playing hard to get. He even pretends like he's going to stand in the correct spot for us before he jukes us and runs away. We want to keep the energy low and not chase him, so while he stops to take a potty break, we go ahead and capitalize, moving in slowly and working him towards that corner so that Darian and I can both get hands on him. At this moment, he realizes the gig is up and he's not happy about it. After his spin and protest, he does do pretty well for the halter, and then he decides he wants to back up. I apply additional weight to his hip so that he believes that he cannot back up any further. As a reaction to that pressure, he leans back into it but stands still while Darian secures the halter. Now Darian hugs his neck and guides him to our shearing space. If he wants to take up right now, there's not a lot she can do besides push back against him and hope that he doesn't know he can outmuscle her. Since she was able to loop that halter around the fence, we are now on the home stretch. The last step is to get that little nose above that top bar so that we can snug up his face and he won't work himself up like we talked about earlier. Once he's secure and we begin shearing, he gives us no more problems. You may notice that when we shear llamas, there is typically one person standing on each side. Piggybacking off the idea that putting pressure on his rump keeps him from moving backwards, putting a person on each side of the llama makes them think they can't move side to side. This again reduces the amount of movement and dancing they do and keeps the energy of shearing very low. When we finish up, we leave Charlie tied so we can herd AJ in that same corner and again keep the catching at a low energy. Herd animals naturally gravitate towards each other. So if AJ wants to stand by Charlie, that's perfect for us. This means we don't have to move AJ to the shearing area and keeps the vibe chill. This is the first year that we have shorn AJ, and you never know what to expect with a new llama. So I was extremely happy that he stood really well for us and was an A-plus student. When we finished him up and let him back with his buddy, they both are busy giving us death glares. It's okay, my dudes. We'll just pack up and start heading out. But just as we're packing up, the resident donkeys come and see what all the commotion's about, and they are nosy. After about 40 minutes, we're back on the road and headed to the seventh place of the day. It's a super short 10 minute drive and I've even made up some time. We're only 40 minutes late and look, my first alpaca is ready and waiting. We get straight to work and this stud is being a total doll. What a good boy. This hobby farm specialty is rescuing camelids and this girl has a special story. Before she was born, her ocular nerve never formed, leaving her completely blind. Surprisingly, she is a complete champion when it comes to shearing. She's been shorn every year of her life, and the noise from the machine does not seem to bother her, but just in case her owner stands there and talks to her so she doesn't get too nervous. This sweet girl's name is Bettina, and she walks circles like 
earlier when she is overstimulated. To help her find her way around when she was a baby, her owners placed bells along the property line. They also put lavender and rosemary in her food and water so that she could smell them. I finished Patina quickly so she can go out and spin in peace. The rest of her herd behaves just as nicely and gives us some really satisfying shears. As much as I enjoy watching it, I can't help but wonder, what do the other animals think when we're shearing their friends? Do they understand that we're just giving Jill a haircut, or does it seem like maybe they are having a bad trip and all of a sudden their friends have started melting? But while you enjoy watching this fiber melt off, all I can see is how dirty it is. Can I just get one clean animal? I mean, look at that. That's pure dirt. That alpaca is supposed to be white. Even playing in the sand pit, we were able to finish these guys in an hour and 45 minutes before we hit the road to the last job. Thankfully, now we are only running 15 minutes late. I had allotted two hours and there were two less animals at this job, so we were able to catch up. Just 15 minutes down the road, I pull into my eighth and final job of the day. I've been shearing for this couple since my very first year, back in 2010. Last year they were just down to two llamas, but now they're up to four. I've never shorn two of them, so we'll see how this goes. It takes me no time to get lost in catching up, and I even forget to bring my box to the shearing area, but that's okay, Darian's got my back. Convincing the new girls to walk up the chute was a breeze. These ladies just followed right behind each other and walked right up to our tie spot. I know in my heart of hearts that it will not be this simple with the original half of the herd, but right now I'm just going to enjoy the fact that this new lady lets Darian put a halter on with no problems whatsoever. We secure her lead rope to a sturdy pole and then get right to work on getting all that hot fiber off this gorgeous gal. I'm super stoked that the first girl does so well and that her partner gets to watch. I find that if the first llama of the group does really well, that energy will carry on to the ones that follow, so hopefully our girl learns something. I encourage her to back out of the chute by placing our hand in front of her nose, creating the feeling that she can't walk forward. Then a quick switcheroo and it's new girl number two's turn. She is also a haltering superstar and allows us to restrain her with no problem. While we're shearing her, she shows us exactly what she learned from her friend and stands like a dream. As all that hot fiber falls off, we reveal a healthy, happy, chunky llama underneath. This girl was obviously well loved. We didn't have too much trouble getting the last two llamas into the chute, and Darian started on the first one while I changed my blades. We've seen a lot of really pretty, well behaved llamas today, but every single one of them has been just absolutely filthy and that means increase in blade changes. I'm super thankful I had enough to get through the day, especially since we were running late. I have had no time to sharpen. When we finally get to the last llama of the day, it seems too good to be true that she walks straight up into the chute. I stand behind her to give her the illusion that she can't back up and they have no problems restraining her. While we are playing in the last sand pit of the day, I notice something suspicious. There are little white specks covering her body, which are lice in their eggs. Good news is they don't transfer to humans and it's easy to rid the herd of them. Overall, this job went really smooth and these guys are super excited to run off and enjoy their new haircuts on this beautiful evening. It's been an hour total here and it's time to pack up and hit that road one last time. Only now we're headed straight for the ranch and back into our beds. It's an hour and 15 minutes home, but that doesn't include stopping to get some dinner. At 10 p.m. we pull back up to the ranch after a 14 hour day. Now it's time to unload and get prepared for the next one. So if you guys enjoyed spending the day with us, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't mess out on the next adventure. And if you want some daily content, check out our Instagram and TikTok.